Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. I pray that uh, this has been a good week for you thus far. And today, let me pull my information up. So today we are continuing in our theme, um, the Gospels. So what we've been doing all month is we've been studying from the books of the Bible. We've been getting kind of a high level view and then some some takeaways just some some good points uh, for us to think about so today we're going to continue um pastor leslie is going to bring the message today and it is the gospel of luke and the theme we are the title we're calling it a savior for all people so we're going to um have a word of prayer and then i'm going to turn it over to pastor leslie for her to um lead us through today's Bible study. Is that all right with everybody? Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day, for this opportunity to be able to seek you and to come before you. We come with uh, our, our hearts and minds tuned and ready to hear from you, to learn from you, and to allow you to just have access to the, the places in our heart and mind that need to have a refresher. So Lord, we just ask you to have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Miss Leslie, take it away. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> I hope you can see and hear me, okay? Yes. As I yes. always say, I will not be before you long. <laughs> <laughs> I hope everybody's having a great week. Um, so in general, we're just gonna do like a general um overview of um the book of Luke um and then just a couple like key points about it and then we're gonna do a little bit of um like some praying um in regards to some of like the themes and you know some of the viewpoints from from which it was written okay um so as apostle said this is a gospel the gospel of Luke a savior for all people um <clears throat> and the all people um emphasis is super impart important um we're gonna kind of touch on that a little bit later but we do want to pay attention to that right um so a little bit of uh, key points on the book of Luke. Um, some people, and this was this was kind of newer for me um, in hearing this, even having gone through biblical courses and things like that. Um, some people view Luke and Acts as going in like hand in hand. Um, some people see that as part one and almost part two of like the same story. Um, not obviously not of the same exact account, um, but it's like a, a the part two from Luke's account. <clears throat> So um, the book of Luke um, is, as we receive it, is written by Luke. We call him the physician. Um, so Luke is, the book of Luke is all about like the seek. One of the key verses is, well, the key verse really is Luke 19 and 16. I'm looking at the side of my notes. Sorry, guys. Um, For the son of man has come to seek and save that which is lost. <clears throat> and then when you think about even the title that um, Apostle and Pastor gave for him being a savior to all people, we're talking about a time where society was heavily divided, right? We have Jews over here. We have Gentiles over there, right? This message is for those people. This tradition is for those people, right? This is, they serve that leader, et cetera, right? And so um, Jesus is coming as one who's acting like a rallying point, right? Uh, when we talk about, we even think about the scripture says God will raise a standard. Jesus was the standard in this time um, that he was for all people um, at this time. So yes, point. Came to seek and save that which was lost. So not just men, not just women, not just Jews, not just Gentiles, everybody. Okay. All right. So um, so Luke um is thought to be uh one of Paul's friends. Um that's was was accepted by a lot of scholars because of 2 Timothy 4 and 11. Um it's a very short verse, but basically Paul says, and, and it's such and I'm summarizing, but he basically says, and Luke is here with me too, by the way, <laughs> as he's writing his letter. Um, and then some scholars believe that even um parts of these books from uh both Luke and Acts may have been written while he was in, in jail with uh, Paul as well. Um and then let's see. So the, <clears throat> a little bit of background in the time period. It's thought that these uh, books are written between 61 and uh, 63 AD, which would have been during that time. 
um, of Paul's uh, um, uh, time in jail, basically. Uh, both those books, both Luke and Acts, that's part of the tie-in pieces of what, not only the content, but also part of the tie-in pieces as to why they feel like it's part like book one and then book two is because of who the, the book is written to. <clears throat> in both of them, he writes to Theophilus. Theophilus's name is significant even <clears throat> because it can be seen as friend of God, right? Because the Theo God and then the, the Philo part has the friendship in there. Um, but Acts 1, 1 through 3, um, basically it's, it's accepted that Theophilus, because, you know, all of these, these different letters in the, in the Bible are written to people, typically either churches or people as encouragement and things like that. And so Acts 1 through 3, there's an assumption that Theophilus may be someone who is actually of importance um, because of the word that's used there. So I'm going to try and use my light. Excuse me, y'all. <laughs> All right, um, it says Acts 1, 1 through 3. Theophilus is thought to be um, a Jew. It's referred to as most excellent or Christistos, Christistos, uh, <clears throat> which would be somebody that's that basically at that time who was used as, as someone who held uh, a high esteem in the, the world, essentially. Um, and then... Yeah. Okay. So those are some of the main points. Now, the other piece um, with, again, him being um, savior to all and him, not Luke, obviously, but we're talking about Jesus um, and the way that Jesus's account is, is presented in this book is him being savior to all. And the reason for that is and there's a strong emphasis on women uh, in this uh, book, which is which is dope, right? Women passes. Woo -woo. Uh, but there's a strong emphasis on women. There's attention paid to them. They're called by name. Some of their st stories are told out. Um, and so uh, when you think about the society, even back then, it was hard to even think of women being in certain roles of leadership. When we look at different, you know, periods of time, different types of societies, and there's an emphasis on women in here, right? Oftentimes when um, a apostle or pastor gets up to preach, they talk about when there's an account given. Oh, oftentimes you see the writers are talking about, um, and there were this many men and children there, men, women, and children. But it'll count the number a lot of times for men, but you have no idea how many women are there. So Lou gives special emphasis, calls certain women by name, and gives them actually some things to say even in the scripture so in luke versus uh, sorry chapters one and two there's a, you know we think of um when well, i oftentimes but some uh, patriarchal kind of view there but this book is putting an emphasis on the story of mary and elizabeth the significance of her speaking and a baby leaping right her speaking and there being a response of agreement from elizabeth right um, and even both of their examples of yielding um, to the Lord in here. Another example of, uh, ex extended example rather from Christ of being a, a servant, right? Because we're talking about Jesus uh, being a savior and a servant to all even. Then we've got at, uh, Anna, the prophetess in Acts 2 and 36. Um, there's an emphasis on her. There's a, a space there where basically her <clears throat> and um, one of the other prophets is with her that is that is talking about like basically these are the things I've been praying um, into the earth that he would be uh, here he would be coming right this is not a uh, this is not something that's come as a surprise to us but this is something that this, that she had been praying for and is listed as the prophet is the one who basically she lived her life essentially in the sanctuary uh, praying and fasting and things like that but there's an emphasis and there's a talk about her. Um, then it goes on, there's a, there's an emphasis even in talking about, um, Simon's mother-in-law being healed. There's the widow that's even mentioned that was raised from the dead. And there's several, there's like at least, hmm, at, at least almost like 20 other mentions of, of women that are emphasized in this um, particular chapter. Um, so there's a significance in there of being, of, of Jesus being savior of all, because he went to seek and save that which was lost, not just men not just children, but everybody, right? And so, oh, sorry. Not just women, not just men, not just, not just uh, children, but everybody. Um, but again, there's an emphasis there, even in the women taking up um, roles of leadership 
even in how they're um, they're portrayed, therefore, and the way that they're submitting to him. It's even show, even uh, showing a godly example, even in those scriptures. Um, so even if we, as we think about Jesus being savior to all, um, what do you feel like has been um, even like a, a challenge for you? And this is for a question for some of the women that are that are even on here. Savior to all. How do you, I would say, and this is this is probably maybe post to Apostle even first, uh, Apostle Jewel, how do you not um, alienate, right, men, not alienate women, but you offer him in a way where he is available to all people, right? He, Jesus came to be the Savior to all. What is one way that you can, even, even in your own example, how can you present him to all people? And now I want to say it just to impossible. How how can you present him to all people? I think that's a good question. And um, I know for us, it's part of the reasons why, even from the church perspective, that I want people to be able to see that it's not just like me as a woman leading, but it's me and Pastor James. So that they get a male perspective, they get a female perspective, um, so it's that balance um, um, of, of, you know, who, who, who can, who can serve God. So I think that's really the biggest thing is trying to, to just be that example um, and showing them, you know, both. Awesome. Amen. Pastor Jocelyn said by first showing up to all people, I have to treat everyone the same. I love that. I think that crosses over for men and women. And then also at this period of time, Jews and Gentiles. So if we think about even the different uh, books who they were written to, some were written to the Jews, right? Some were written. Would have been a Gentile. Gentile meaning that he hadn't been raised or baptized into, if you will, um, the um, Jewish tradition, right? So he wouldn't have been a part of the society that was carrying those traditions from forefathers and, you know, the things that a lot of um, the society from which a lot of the gospel writers would have uh, been from or had history from. He was making this gospel accessible to all people. And part of this, it's so as well, because Acts is, is another picture of the history of the church. So if you look at the, the very first verses of Luke, he kind of gives his reasons as to why he's writing it. He says that, yes, he's writing it to Theophilus. And he, he agrees with the fact that other people have also written gospels. But his point is to make sure that there's, a, the, you know, as he's um, basically studied through and, and had a fine tooth comb with the histories of others, that he has an accurate account of the story of Jesus and that he's portraying him as the savior of all people. Each of the gospels has a different um, way that they almost present Jesus. John is completely different. John said, you know what? I knew him personally. We're going to put a whole remix and spin on this whole thing, which you'll hear about, you know, another time. But Luke, he wanted to present him to everybody, right? Because if you say that this is just written for the Jews, there's a scripture that talks about that, that later on, right? There's no more Jew or Gentile and all that, right? No more slave and free and all that. So he's he's almost setting the precedent to kind of pull some of those walls down and again make him accessible to everybody because he realizes this group this man is great, right? And especially if he's Paul's friend, right? He's suffering with Paul. If if we're taking on the, the thought of some of the theologians, if he's suffering with Paul in jail and he's writing to Theophilus to stay encouraged, then that means he has some belief in this savior that was made available to him as well, right? There are other gospel, well, the other gospel writer, John, um, is talking about from his personal account, right? And he's talking about, I'm, I'm using these historical facts. I'm using basically secondhand kind of um, repetition, almost like this is the story of Jesus. This is a historical fact of Jesus, but he's making him uh, presentable to each and every person. And not only that, but again, he's in, encouraging the women, even in the in the in society that will read this, with, including their accounts, their history with God, right about the fact that he that they knew and had been praying for the Savior to be made man on this earth. And then he also uh, highlights again the story of Jesus' mother and cousin, really, <laughs> um, and their story and how that came to be he again he he emphasizes the 
I, I don't want to say allness, <laughs> but almost like the allness. Like I want to make this available to everybody. I want to make it accessible to everybody, not only in my writing, but also in the story that I'm presenting. I'm showing you healing. I'm, I'm showing Jesus healing and touching uh, people of all sorts, right? And not only that, but he even uh, uh, has a count in there about the, the many healings that he performed over different types of people, including the, the raising of um, the mother-in-law when they came to the house to eat. Um, so he's from the start to finish, he's keeping a historical account, but he's also framing it in a way where it's accessible to you and I today, right? We don't keep up with a lot of Jewish tradition, right? And so this is written to, uh, if, if it was straight, strictly to us, it, this would have been one of the books that we read, right? This is the story. This is the account of Jesus. He was available to all of these people and he's also, also available to you. Um, and so I feel like this is one of the, the, the gospels that we especially need to hold dear John as well, because John, to me, John is such a, um, like a poetic gospel. And I think it comes from the place of um, his heart um, from the Lord. Obviously, he's the one who, you know, lay there, but I knows the heartbeat of God. But I feel like this one, if nothing else, should really connect with us. Uh, because this is the one where I don't want to say we are excluded, you know, from the others. But this, yes, like Pastor James said, this is like an inclusive Jesus. He said, the inclusive Jesus, Jesus perspective accessible to all. That's exactly it. Um, and so that's the sense that I get from when I read um, the book of, Lost, uh, of gospel, of gospel, of Luke. Um, and not only that, with the key verse, that he went and, and uh, went to seek and save the lost, that which was lost, right? And so if you are at this time, you know, even a woman, you're, you're, you're trying to work, you're trying to take care of the children, right? You're trying to do um, what you're supposed to do. Um, and Jesus is saying, hey, I'm available to you too. It's not just for this, this, this priest over here. It's not just for that man over there. It's not just for, you know, this boy child, um, but I'm available to you as well. And then not only that, but again, like I said, the healings as well. Those things were, were emphasized and highlighted in the book of Luke. Um, so, you know, Apostle kind of mentioned about making him accessible to men and women, right? So how do you think we as Christians can make Jesus more accessible to those who even may be in other religions or who um, have never heard of him, right? So I'm, I'm going to Panama and it doesn't mean that they have never heard of him because it's another country. But how do you think um, are some ways that we can make him accessible, not just to men and not just to women, but people in other religions, people, you know, who think they are serving, you know, this true God. What are some ways that we can make him accessible today? We know already from, from, the, from the Gospel of Luke, we see some almost like testimonies of faithfulness, right, in the, in the, the midst of um, things that they never experienced before. I don't know about you, but if I, I was married, I would have been like, whoa, wait a minute, right? This one was a virgin. <laughs> how 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 is working out? You know. Um, so, but what are some ways that you think that we can make the gospel of Jesus accessible to people who it may feel like, for lack of a better word, they may feel excluded or they may feel like it's not for them. Um, like some of the other gospels may have made some others feel initially because of who it was written to uh, at first. That was a little bit of a loaded question, but anybody can oh. answer. I'm just going to say, I think the way to present Jesus to all people is really through love. It really uh, separates uh, Christianity or the, the gospels from other religions. It's really his unconditional love. No matter where you are, he's going to meet you there. And that he came and sacrificed all that he was and all that he is to meet with you. You know, and so who can deny that type of love? And I think if we walk in the love of Christ and we're able to show that, that's what the word says, they will know we are Christians by our love. Have we mastered it? That's that's a loaded question too, but um, I think the love of Christ. I love that. Yeah, I totally agree. Anybody else? I also think just kind of picking off, off of what uh, Papa is prophet said um it is the love and i think part of it starts with um meeting people where they are because sometimes we just want to jump in and share share christ but first let me hear your story so 
I even mm-hmm. know what to say and, you know, let God give me things that might resonate with you. And sometimes it may not be saying anything. It's just a matter of showing up. Cause I just, I just saw something the other day. Uh, it was about this man that was an atheist and he was, I don't know if it was in some panel or something, but he was talking and he was in a conversation with this woman and he was sharing why he didn't believe God and all of this. And all she said to him was, can I give you a hug? She hugged him. And this man said he could not shake the feeling of love that he experienced when she hugged him uh-huh. and it made him <laughs> want to know what that was. And when he asked what it was, God, God revealed that it was him. So sometimes yeah. how you present God is really in you being just the vessel. Yes. I love that. That yes, I know of a, a story like that. Similarly, it was a Satanist um that basically the lady was interviewing and then um she hugged him at the end of the interview um and he like you said he couldn't shake it he ended up actually having a dream and he got a hug in the dream and he knew it was God and it was the same exact feeling of overwhelming love um that he received from her right she wasn't expecting anything back from him she was just like here's what I can give you and that's just love period you know so I, I love that so again we've got that love Pastor Darla said, yes, so good, just by demonstrating God's love through action. Amen. So both of those last two comments, to me, they really connect to what that key verse is for this book, which again is Luke 19 and 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. So can you imagine if the King of Kings and Lord of Lords would go in search of us, right? And he is the one who, like, as we say, the senior say sits high and looks low, right? Who are we to not go after those that are lost, right? Who, who don't even know this kind of love? Who don't even know um, that this savior is available to them? Who don't even know like that Satanist that encountered that love of God? They had never experienced anything like that, right? They had all this hate in their heart. They were well acquainted with hate, but that kind of love they had never experienced. And so that, if nothing else, that is something that we have because we have it from God. God is love, right? And so because we have that, I want to encourage you, if you especially we have our evangelism team, our, you know, Pastor Tiffany's over evangelism, um, like she can even help help us to, to guide us along about how to even seek and, and, and you know, seek and go after that which is lost. Um, with love but we have the love of God we have the spirit of God on the inside of us and so that's something that we can go when we go to to seek that, that which is lost that's what we can go filled with this is is his love um but yeah so those are just um some of the main things with uh, the book of Luke um it's interesting that um you know, he's a doctor um, in this case. So even when you think about doctors, doctors also have to see just anybody, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter, man, woman, boy, girl, you know, all of that, they have to see everybody without prejudice. And so um, that's something also through his writings, I believe that that he was able to see people as people, right? They weren't, uh, the the women in the books were not um, mentioned as less than or weaklings or anything like that. Um, They were strong people, right? Even Anna the prophetess, that's one of my, that's my favorite prophet in the Bible because of her lifestyle. And and he he gives a glimpse of what it is. It's a short blurb, but she spent her life, (laughs) you know, praying and worshiping. And so even those things to me, you know, in particular are are significant on the things that would seem insignificant in today's society and even you know back then about you know some of these these women in particular that that gave their lives for the lord um and then also the fact that you know jesus as usual you know made himself available to all people but luke really wanted to make sure that that was a picture that was clear is that he was there for everybody you know man woman boy girl gentile and jew um and that even though this book was written you know to um the gentile gentile man theophilus specifically that it was available the gospel was then available to everybody after that because we know already in the book of acts we hear so much of the beauty of the history of the church right connected to that he's like hey part two right (laughs) in acts and so he just kind of connects it you know further and even um there's even a tying in with that uh savior to all peace because you hear 
even if you think about on the day of Pentecost, when the tongues came upon the people, they heard them giving God praise in their different languages. And so even God was using even that moment to bring people nearer to him, right? To show that I'm for you and you and you, you can hear me in your own language and know that I love you and that I'm here and that I'm good and all of that, you know? So it's, it's, it's almost like an echo of the testimonies of God being spoken in a way that everybody can understand, you know? And for me, that is a, that's the, the bridge, that connecting picture when the day of Pentecost with the fire, the tongues of fire, and then hearing God, uh, hearing them praise God in different languages was even a connector piece. Um, so yeah, that's, that's just some of the main uh, pieces of Luke. Did anybody have anything they wanted to add or any questions or anything like that for Luke? don't see any nope. questions okay so that was good and um it just it was it was a good reminder um when you talk about just the the the, the fact that he was he made salvation available to everyone and mm -hmm. so i think that's a reminder for us as believers that we're not in any, any you know a private country club where you can't we, we can't let anybody in. So the doors have to be open for all to have access. Now, what they do with the option or the choice is theirs, but you at least have to have that door open um, for them to be able to. But then it goes back to what we said before. We got to be an example of it, of what we're offering. We can't be saying we're offering the love of God and what we what we passing out is sour lemonade. <laughs> You know, so just a just a good reminder for us to ask ourselves, how am I actually showing up in every interaction, even if I don't necessarily think I'm presenting the gospel when I store up, show up at the grocery store, um, when I'm in line, when I'm waiting on something, especially with somebody that made me mad. How am I showing up? Am I presenting the gospel? So just a real good reminder. Amen. Anybody else have any thoughts or comments? All right, so next Wednesday, we will be completing the study about the Gospels, and Jocelyn will be bringing the Gospel of John, Eternal Life Through His Name. Um, so again, just a couple of quick announcements. Remember, this is our last um, Men's Sunday. Ooh, ooh, Pastor James has been bringing some really good um, messages, so we're excited about that. Um, and so we're going to see what the Lord has for us this Sunday. Um, don't forget tomorrow I am doing the next installment of Mountain Movers Prayer for those that are available at 1030. Um, so join me on Facebook. If you don't make it live, you always can go back and watch the replay either on Facebook or you can get it on our YouTube channel. Um, so again, we're going to have Leslie lift up prayers for us. Does anybody have any prayer or prayer requests? If you do, you can put them in the comments. And uh, we're just going to ask Leslie to lift up a word of prayer, and then we will let you guys go. Amen? Okay. And if you get any, you can put them in the chat, and I will um, take a look. Um, Father, we thank you so much for the good news. Um, God, I know. The good news is ever present. <laughs> yeah, and that good news um, doesn't even really need to up that you are faithful, that your word is true, Father, and that if you did something miraculous, amazing, beautiful, fantastic before God, that you would do it again and it'll just look different to us, Father. But you've been amazing and we were even here, Father. We thank you, God. Um, for all that you've done, God, even um, through the writer, Father God, Luke, Father, we thank you for um, your emphasis, Father, and the fact that you are indeed Savior to all, Father. We thank you, God, uh, for the testimonies and the stories, even of the women, uh, Father God, in in the, in the scriptures, Father God, that were highlighted. Father, we thank you for their uh, ability to speak um, their own account and experiences with you, God. Um, and we thank you, God, for them helping to pave the way for women, even in ministry now. Um, Lord, we thank you, hallelujah, that we are included, Father God, in the good news, Father God. The message of the good news is not just to the Jews 
Father, God, but it's to the Gentile, Father, God, it's to us, Father, so we thank you, we receive the good news, we're excited, Father, God, for uh, what you have even for our future, Father, God, and that you freed us even from the chains and the shackles of the past. Lord, I ask that you bless each and every person, God, that is uh, that was on the uh, study tonight, Father God, and even, Lord God, those that are going to watch on the replay, Father God. We give you glory, and we ask, God, that you would bless our pastors in Jesus' name. Cover them with uh, your blood from the crown, so their head to the soles of their feet, Father God. And we ask that you would have your way and keep us um, safe, God, and near you, God, throughout this week, God, until we uh, even reunite on Sunday, God. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Everyone have a Amen. great rest of the evening. Good night. Good night, all. Good night. Good night.